among them Matt Good, Midnight Oil, the legendary Gene Simmons from KISS, and Japan's Puffy Ami Umi. They're all here tonight on the program. Stay tuned. I think maybe a good place to start was you talking about the performances over the weekend and how you felt they went. Fantastic, actually. I, I, I mean, I can say it definitely for me and Rich. Uh, that was probably the most fun I've had playing in my entire life. You're in a band, um, and uh, if things go wrong with that band, Things in life change. There's really nothing you can do about that, you know? There were certain aspects of the band and, and, and individuals that were, you know, at the end there, that were more interested in, in the business of, of music than, than really making it. We've got Christian Thorvaldson. Yep, Christian Thorvaldson, who was in a band called Copyright. Now I've been a big fan of his plan I probably for a decade. So looking right and seeing Chris there is for me just, you know, it's kind of like looking right and seeing the edge, you know, for other people. And Mark Olickson, obviously, who uh, is kind of the Pope of New Wave in Vancouver. <laughs> and uh, is just a fantastic multi-instrumentalist. He's just, uh, just a talented guitar player as he is a piano player and a keyboard player. And he's kind of a Mr. Wizard, which is, um, back, I, I think maybe four or five months ago, when I was thinking about who I wanted to, you know, put together to be in the band, I, I thought of him instantly, and there was kind of no other name. And then, of course, Pat, or Patrick, as I like to call him. You formed something equivalent to like a, I guess the Vancouver equivalent of a supergroup to some degree. An E Street band, if you will. Let's not let's not do supergroup. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I've, I've I've always been a big fan of that that whole E Street Band thing that that Springsteen always did. So yeah. Crazy. Want this? Even for a while. For the most part, me and Rich have demoed the entire thing by ourselves. So, um, if uh, the guys do come in, you know, they'll uh, they'll be brought in for a certain uh, a song here, a song there, kind of thing. So, but I'm gonna kind of keep it open. I'm gonna have a little bit of a revolving door policy instead of you play guitar, so therefore you're going to play the guitars. I mean, I may end up playing the majority of the guitars in the record. I I, I don't know yet. If you want a 20-year career, then you you know realize that longevity in itself takes time. That you're gonna have to you know there's gonna be ups and downs and and good times and bad times and. Uh, they're all going to be part of the experience. If there's one thing that dominates the life of an artist, especially in the early stages of a career, it's confusion. Confusion about what the industry is looking for, compared to what artists are looking for. Confusion about one's sense of artistic self-worth and the pitfalls that come with altering one's vision to gain mass appeal. And a general confusion about what has become a blanket definition of artistic success. Obviously, you were drawing on some life experience mm -hmm. when you were talking about some of that stuff. Yeah, absolutely. The obvious truth of the matter is that the whether you succeed or fail in this business is inconsequential. Whether you succeed or fail with yourself is of great consequence. And success is tricky like that. In many cases, the gains are never as monumental as the loss of self required to attain them. I've had a little bit of experience with this with people I know. One day you wake up and you're 50, and you look at yourself in the mirror and you realize that you are successful, that you've made a lot of money, you have a nice house, you have cars, and you have no integrity. And it is an impossible void to fill. The loss of oneself and then the realization that you have lost it and that you can't get it back, to me, horrifies me. It horrifies me more than anything I can possibly think of. Remember that without artists, there is no business. Without artists, the entire industry, from executives to regional stale staff, to radio DJs, to radio stations, to the media, to much music, to MTV, all of them are out of a job. Don't get me wrong, record companies serve a purpose, you know? They're loan sharks. For lack of a better term, they're loan sharks. They give you money that you owe back, and once they make their money back, you start making a little bit of money. <laughs> 
basically not a lot, but a little bit of money. I mean, if your goal is basically to get into the music industry, to sell a shitload of records, then, uh, you know, go for it. But if it's not, if it's to say something, or if it's to basically stick to your guns and do what it is that you want to do, I think that given the current state of the music in, in this country and especially around the world, that that uh, is something that needs to be addressed. I think that we live in a day and age, especially when it comes to music, that the best and brightest of, you know, what is considered middle of the road mediocre art are the superstars of today. And you want to know what, despite what everyone else, you know, what everyone out there might think, that's just a sad reflection on us. Not on music, but on us.